Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and lovers of drones everywhere, welcome to Thursday Night Live, everybody! All right, break it down. Yeah. Spotlight on Linda. Go, Linda. It's your birthday. Do you dance? It's your birthday. All right. Welcome to the show. My goodness gracious me, oh my, so many things tonight, not the least of which is... The me drone finally gonna go to someone else. I mean, I mean that that sounded negative. I meant to say we're gonna give away an awesome drone tonight. That's better. Uh, news coming up. I've got some great video of the drone rescue from an eight, uh, 88 foot a tower. They finally got it down. You might remember that from last week. I've got some incredible footage of a boat sinking and a drone just happened to be there. And Ed Ricker joins us in just about 30 minutes. He will talk all about photography, his YouTube channel, his vlogs. Uh, but first, as always, you know it is the Cadillac of processed meats. That's right. You'll enjoy pigeon jerky, pigeon jerky, the Cadillac of processed meats. Da -da 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 -da. You'll enjoy pigeon jerky, pigeon jerky. You give your family a treat. It's balanced nutrition to help them grow. And it's full of fiber to make them go. You'll enjoy pigeon jerky. Pigeon jerky. The Cadillac of processed meat. Yeah. All right. Oh, my goodness. Hello, Linda, and welcome to the show. Hey, Ken. How you doing? I'm pretty good. Yourself? How's the weather? The weather's great. I see a news front coming in. Stop the music. A news it's front. Time oh, that's for good. News. Now from the drone newsroom, she's wearing the glasses to make herself look smarter. All the drone news you need to draw drone, drone news is drone is Linda. Hey. Hey. So, <laughs> you know how like airplanes will drop bombs up on places and it's all boom and explosions and fire yeah 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 well they figured while they're out there dropping bombs uh that they might as well deploy some drones so northrop grumman came up with a way to basically deploy a 12 foot wingspan drone in the form of a bomb that they can drop oh and uh it can it can then cruise and and gather some information about the area maybe uh, where troops are located or maybe some sensor type data okay can fly up for, to like 10 hours and so then moving on to the next news story, uh, Embry-Riddle, some of you might know, it's an aviation school. They're doing a free two-week course for um, small drone pilots. And it'll basically go over some things like maintenance, you know, operation, and, you know, that kind of thing. And so if you want to sign up for that, I think registration started a couple days ago. I'm going to put the link in the... Uh, in the live chat here in a second. Okay. And that way you can sign up for it too. It runs from like the end of February until the beginning of March. So you have some time before it starts. But that, that'd be pretty cool just to participate in, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very handy. All right. And then let's go back into everything, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the French military apparently has trained four, not one, not two, not three, but four golden eagles to uh, take down drones. Can you imagine? <laughs> That's kind of cool. How crazy is that? Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of cool. That's not, yeah, so apparently the Dutch, you know, uh, military uh, kind of started doing that in late 2015, and uh, they trained some bald eagles to do it. So the, the French said, "Oh, we're going to go bigger. We're going to go with golden <laughs> eagles." So these eagles are trained to take down these uh, small drones near airports and things like that. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. Oop. Yeah, look at that thing. I wonder if the drone is <laughs> is even uh, usable after. The eagle grabs it like that. I don't know. I guess it would depend on how it was grabbed. And uh, I mean, I don't know how they train them, but I would imagine that those rotating propellers could hurt one of those eagles. I mean, those things can do some damage. Yeah, not to not to dwell on the on the errors, but I have a I have a soundboard here. I'll show you. I'll show you. And uh, the way I usually do the show is all friggy frag fragged up now because Linda, you're coming in where my computer usually does because I did something. But as long as it's working, I can live with that. But I'll show you what I'm dealing with here. A little behind the scenes for you. There we go. There's there's what I'm using. There's my soundboard right there. And then uh, here's the thing that makes all the all the funny noises. So you know, 
That might be interesting to some. So, uh, yes, the, the Black Hawk helicopter. You may have heard about that. Drone operator violated multiple regulations, including flying way too far away to see the aircraft, and uh, the NTSB was very upset. Uh, here's that story. Well, the U.S. military is investigating a collision between an Army helicopter and a drone over Staten Island. The drone hit the Black Hawk helicopter approximately 500 feet over Midland Beach around 8 o'clock last night. A piece of the drone bounced off the rotor and then got lodged in the chopper. Thankfully, the pilot was not hurt. He was able to safely land the helicopter at Linden Airport in New Jersey. The helicopter was protected the United Nations. There's no word on the drone's owner. And clearly it was a Phantom 4. We've got some more details about it. Uh, the NTSB said that the drone operator's lack of knowledge about aviation safety regulations contributed to the collision. Uh, the Black Hawk helicopter sustained damage to its main rotor blade. Those things aren't cheap. And, uh, yeah, they're not. <laughs> yeah, it, and they said that, that this guy, and I can't pronounce his last name, it's Russian, Ten, Tendashov, was flying for recreational purposes and did not require pilot certification from the FAA. And he was registered. And that's how they found him. So every, everybody's okay. There were two TFRs in effect, temporary flight restrictions, at the time of the crash. One for the UN General Assembly and one restricting air, aircraft, including model aircraft and unmanned drones from operating within 30 nautical miles of the location. So if he had a Part 107, he would have known to look for these TFRs. Mm. Yeah. And is that the news? That's the news. Awesome. Okay. Uh, we're going to bring Ed in. Uh, but before that... Everybody keep your fingers and toes crossed. <laughs> no, no, we're not going to do that right now. For, right now, we've got mail. Email. We get email. Get your email every day. Here's your mail today. All right, and this has an amazing, an amazing video along with it. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the video and then read the email as the video is going. This is from a guy named Kevin Cadby. And I want to show this to you right now. Yeah, I gotta remember. Uh, all the buttons are different. Here you go. Watch this. He just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Look at that. So. Kevin says, one of my favorite places to fly is Jupiter Inlet in Jupiter, Florida. I usually go to the inlet here in Palm Beach County at high tide. But people warn that the inlet can be dangerous when the tide is running out with strong winds blowing in. A friend from the marina asked me to take and post videos of boats going in and out during those conditions, so I started doing that. Well, I was in the right place at the right time when a fishing boat sank while trying to come into the inlet. So I thought of you, Ken, and I thought you'd enjoy seeing it. Thank you for your time, Ken, and thank you for your recording your Thursday shows because my situation here doesn't always let me watch them live. Kevin Cadby. And, of course, you can see that the dude survived. He was, he was fine. How about that? That is, that is that's creepy and that's pretty cool footage, I guess. It's almost like they scripted it for a movie or something. Right. I mean, can you imagine just filming boats and then something like that happen? How I mean, lucky. That's nuts. That's yeah. crazy. Okay. <clears throat> I got so much stuff that I want to share, but let's go ahead and bring right. Ed in because I know that if it's going to break again, it'll happen when I try to bring a second person in. So, yeah, I, mm. I got to say, I'm a little parched, if you excuse me. Just one moment. Okay. All right. Mm. Oh, I know. So rude. All right. I mean, I've got like three hours worth of, of, of stuff here. So it'll be a well, marathon. we don't have three no, hours. No, we're not going to do three we've hours. we got so. about an hour. Yeah. All right. Linda has an hour. Oh, wow. SGS Mike. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, SGS Mike. 
Okay, I appreciate you guys sticking around. Let's go ahead and bring someone else in if I can. Lordy Lord. Put on me. His last name is mentioned in here. Ed, if you're watching, this is a slick operation. Slick. Oh, great. Oh, he's not on my list. Oh, there he is. Okay, here we go. Fingers crossed. Crossed. Yeah. All right. Ed? Hello. Hello. Oh, Ed, thank goodness. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. Hey, welcome. I see Linda. How's it going, Linda? Now, I do not hey. see, I see, oh, I see Ken's uh, uh, Heron logo. Yeah. Is that what you see, Linda? Yeah, I can't see anything. You can't see me. Now. Okay. See, that's, no. that's okay. I can see I you guys. You earlier. Your hair is fabulous. Yeah, I know. Everybody's looking at the, um, the <laughs> thank you. Uh, and I'm trying to turn on video and it won't turn on the video for some reason. Let me just, right. I, I want to derail the show again, but let me just go ahead and try one okay. thing. And I'm sure that one thing will screw everything up. Oh, that's what it is. That's what it is. Okay. I'm going to call you guys right back. <laughs> Okay. 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 All right. Hang it up. All right. Good Lord. Good Lord, man. This is the worst. So far, no connection problems. But I have to restart Skype. I'm going to find a way to never use Skype again. I hate Skype. I don't know what I hate more. Skype or... <laughs> Just kidding. I don't hate that drone. Thank you for sticking around. It's not usually like this. Mm. Something happened during the um, the power glitch today, and it really messed everything up for me. So I have to make sure that people can see me. There you go. There you go. We're good there. We're good. We're good. We're coming back here. We're going over here. Now we're gonna go. I know it. This is horrible. This is the worst. But I'm going to call Linda. <laughs> oh, come on. All right. Hello. Linda, you there? Okay. Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? I hear you now. All right. Linda's there, so you can see. All right. Yeah. Now, back over to me just while I dial Ed back. I will by next week. I'm getting this in increments. It's it's getting better each time, I would hope. Or worse, depending on how you're looking at it. So. Uh. There we go. Can you Hello. see me? can you see me now? How's it going? I can see you. I can see you both. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Can you hear me? And uh, uh, Linda, can I hear you? Say yeah, uh, okay. I could. I can hear you. Uh, for me, the screen is frozen, but I'm not really here for the picture. No, no. Let me. Let me try. No, I'm just kidding. We're we're gonna do this. <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 no. We're gonna keep rolling. Yeah, yeah. we're we're definitely gonna keep rolling. So it might fix itself as we keep going, it might. Yeah, it might fix itself. <laughs> I'm very optimistic as that. Okay, so Ed, yeah. welcome, man. Thank you for uh, taking time to be on the show. Yeah. Well, thank you both for having me. Thank you, Ken. Um, yeah, I haven't really spoken with you, Ken, very much. And Linda, this is the first time I meet you, but I yeah. really dig both of your YouTube channels. Um, Linda, I just saw yours today, and I'm really impressed by some of your work, some of your videography and your time lapses. That's awesome. Well, thank you. But, um, I love Ken's channel, too, all the work he does with drones. Thanks for having me. Thanks, man. And I've got a video from you. You've been uh, doing a lot of race drone stuff, and I'll go yeah. ahead and play that up here while we uh, while we talk. Yeah, yeah, the audio isn't so important. It's just this is something that I put, uh, put on my YouTube channel just a couple weeks ago, and it kind of showed the trials and tribulations of me getting started with flying acro with uh, FPV quad. And Ken, I know you recently tried an FPV quad uh, recently. I think it was in November. Yeah, and yeah. And the, it was, it, it's hard, isn't it? it it's, it's very difficult. hard. Now explain you acro crash, mode. Though, did you? <laughs> well, that's the thing. The first two minutes of my first flight, I broke the camera. 
Oh, wow. And that's hard okay. to do because the cameras, I, I, hit, I hit a cement yeah. curb. It was horrible. And then I found huh. out that you can replace said lens with uh, any old GoPro uh, lens pretty much on those types mm -hmm. of cameras. Yeah, you can get a bunch of spare ones of those. So I have a couple spare. And yeah, if everything happens, I can always kind of uh, switch them out. But yeah, it's a good time. You know, starting out with DJI drones, it's a little bit different because those are GPS assisted drones and they hover and mm -hmm. they, they're smart and they, they have stabilized footage. And these FPV quads, that's not really what they're designed for. They're designed more for racing and for fun, for acrobatics, hence the word acro flying and acro mode, and, and just having a good time with them like that, especially with friends. It's a hobby to have with friends and to uh, enjoy a day like that. So this video we're watching is just me having a good time trying to get used to the drone and trying not to wreck it completely. Uh, uh, you know, render it unusable. The good thing about these types of uh, drones and quadcopters is that they are very custom. So if you do wreck, chances are it's just going to be a little bit of soldering and maybe a $10 piece that you have to repair and you could probably get back up flying again. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not anywhere near flying like this. The, the one video I saw of, uh, and I keep forgetting the guy's name, he's got this really cool mustache. If anybody's into race drones. Oh, Mr. Steel, yeah. Yes, I saw a video of him where he is surfing a building, like doing um, incredible. And I thought, I want to do that. So then I got all the stuff and uh, and I tried to do that. So that those were all your that was your equipment that you didn't borrow that equipment. That was your equipment that you bought, and you're you're trying to get good at it too, right? I, I am trying to get get into. It. I'm, awesome. There's so much well, to learn. I didn't even Mr. know Steel how. Steel is a completely different uh, level. I mean, that's 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 insane. That's years and years of commitment. Um, like I said, I've only been doing this a couple of weeks now, so I'm I'm just really happy that I don't crash it every five seconds. That's all I can ask for myself. Yeah, and I have a second video here from you. Uh, this is something you recently did. Yeah, this was today. I wanted okay. to show the resilience of drones because or of FPV quads because I like to fly around trees, but you can see that <laughs> a small tumble may not just say that you're done flying for the day. If the props are good and nothing broke, you could probably take off again if it, if it landed right side up. Um, you can hit trees like that, like I didn't see that branch, but the, the quad didn't even crash. It didn't fall on the ground, it just kept going. Here's another time I hit the ground and it just kind of spun me around and, and we kept going, no issues. So I'm not saying that happens every single time, but what I am saying is these these quads are, are built to withstand quite a bit. And if you did that with a Mavic or a Phantom, uh, your day would probably be over for the majority of those crashes. And and with an FPV quad, you could probably just uh, switch something out, push something back into place, maybe a little bit of soldering, and you're back in business. The thing for me with the race drones, aside from missing out on the GPS assist, is all the technical stuff like with the... Uh, with the controller and all the things that you need to know. I didn't even know how to charge the battery at, at, when I mm. first got it. I didn't know that you had to hook two things up. I, I'm such a newbie in that regard. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of advice would you give? And I haven't tried a simulator yet. I know you can hook mm. up a simulator right to your controller. Yeah, yeah. Um, controller like this has a little uh, port right there. Okay. And then you use a cable. I happen to have it plugged in right now, actually, and this goes to USB to your computer. And then as long as your computer can recognize that, you, you know, you turn on your controller and maybe do a little bit of calibrating, you can open up your simulator and you can get going. And, yeah, I, it sounded like you're about to ask what I might suggest for new flyers. I think that's the biggest thing is starting on a simulator. Buy a 10 maybe $20 simulator. There are also some free versions as well. And really... You know, get get a get a handle on the controls and fly an acro and see just how that feels because it's very different from flying a GPS assisted drone like a DJI product. Yeah, yeah, very. Although very DJI different. has some new FPV drones out now too, so hey, they're getting in the game as well. They do, and their new sports uh, goggles. What are they, what are they call mm -hmm. them? Uh, yeah, the, like sports racing edition. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can stuff. Put one of those antennas right on there, like a regular racing. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah, it looks it looks it has the same antenna as something like this and actually it looks very similar to this. This is the Ishin EV800. This is a very budget option, but it looks almost like that in terms of how it kind of would um extend like your head goes here obviously. So it kind of extends beyond a little bit more than maybe more of expensive Fat Shark and Amway type goggles. I need somebody to show me. I need an expert to show me. 
Where you li- you're in uh, North Carolina? Mm-hmm. North yeah. Carolina. Nope. Well, North I might Carolina. just drive up there if uh, you would uh, agree to help me out. <laughs> well, if you want an expert, you don't ask me. I, like I said, I'm I'm learning this as I go as well, but I have learned a few things, and I'm I'm always willing to share. So hey, if you want to come over, let's fly. <clears throat> let's do well, it. Well, something I learned by watching your live stream last night was uh, that uh, well, and you know more about this th- than I do right now. Is the the new the the registration is being reinst- reinstated for hobbyists? Mm-hmm. Is that yes. and that's just for people who are not registered or haven't before. Do you know if you're a hobbyist and you registered prior to the whole debacle, will you have to re-register? That's what I want to know. I don't think so. Um, and maybe some people in the chat who know a little bit more than I do can maybe uh, chime in, but. For, for what I know and what people have said in the past, uh, no, you don't need to re-register if you already have registered once. Um, you do create an account, like a login, when you register yourself as a recreational pilot. And you could probably log in there again and see if um, your registration is still active. You should have the ability to check your status. And, and I know that's a fact for commercial <clears throat> Uh, drones. You can actually see the status of your various drones that have been registered commercially, and and mine are still active. So I'm not. I don't think so, anything's changed in that regard. And if you do Google FA registration, first thing that will pop up will be lots of ads. Don't fall for that. Those are just people that are trying to take your money. If you don't see this screen, this is the official yeah. FAA website for SUAS registration. If you don't see this, then uh, somebody's trying to uh, get your money. And the link to yeah. This is in the description below. Yeah, if you're paying more than five dollars, you are hold falling. On, for hold on, hold on, hold oh, on. Oh, holy! I'm sorry, we got to stop the show because something amazing just happened. Did you see that? Did you see that? What was that? Something <laughs> yeah, went by I there. Seen it. What that was, was nuts? That, what? 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 what uh, uh, where's, where's the? Where, what, that what? was Greg. Greg? Yeah. Greg, I can't. I got to scroll that back. What, what, there was a message with it. Oh, Greg, our buddy yeah. Greg in Australia. Thanks for your commitment yeah. to the channel and this weekly show. I hope this will help go towards the cost of your software purchase. Yeah, I, I, I had to buy a lot of software to get this to work today. Um, as, as far as that goes, everything seems to be running smoothly. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, That's thank awesome. you, thank Very you. Impressive. But yeah. I will have to earmark that money for the therapy that I'm going to need after tonight's show. <laughs> So, uh, and all the tissue, all you need to resupply your uh, Kleenex for all the tissues from the tears that you have to soak I up. Did, I shed a little bit of a tear. By the way, Super yeah. Chat is, is on right now, and I wanted to let everybody know that I've put together a, a Pigeon Jerky prize pack. The last Pigeon Jerky prize pack sold very well. So if you're interested in uh, this, the and Greg just bought four of them. Each super chat, the first 10 super chats of $25, we'll get a pigeon jerky pin. I know you're a big fan there, Ed. You get a pigeon jerky pin. That's Plus, awesome. That's 100% genuine Tennessee pigeon. That's right, and it's feather free. <laughs> and you will get your choice of either Mavic or Phantom Eyes. These keep the birds away. For real. Okay. I've seen it. And, and I will send you this genuine bag of actual pigeon jerky. <laughs> Our buddy great. Jim Wallace printed these up. Of course, this is not actual pigeon, it's, but it's delicious. And if you're in another country and you want this, I will send you the bag and the the label, and you can make your own. So, is it wow. is it gluten free? Uh, no, I think it's got extra gluten in it. In fact, oh okay, extra yeah, gluten. Extra, extra gluten. So, what do you got coming up on your channel? Uh, and by the way, please subscribe to Ed's uh, Ed Ricker's blogs. There's a link in my description. Please subscribe. And uh, what do you got? What do you got coming up that people would be interested in? What are you What are you working on, sir? Mm, well, I, I would like to put together some more FPV stuff, but I would also like to put together some more DJI drone stuff because I don't want to necessarily just stop making DJI drone videos. I mean, it, I guess at the moment I'm I'm focused on one thing for them for the moment is getting better at that FPV quad racing, but. Um, you know, oh, do you want to address that, Jack? Jack, uh, oh my I god, just gave you a great, oh my great donation god, as well. Jack. Thank you so much. I agree with, with Greg, you deserve some help with that purchase. Oh my goodness, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> Lisbeth, awesome. this is the big one. That's a reference to, uh, yeah, nobody gets that. This is another 70s show. 
Uh, Sanford and Son. That's what that was. Thank you so much. And I'm, I'm all like, I, I, need, I need to turn on the air conditioner. Hold on a second, sir. I'm getting <laughs> it's all, getting hot in here. Yeah, it's getting hot in here. Uh, wow, thank you so much. What were you saying before we were oh, so politely um, interrupted? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, pleasantly interrupted. Um, so uh, then also next week I'm going to try and schedule uh, some time with uh, this. It's actually a mobile command facility trailer sort of thing that they're using to train police, firefighters, and other rescue workers at Montgomery Community College here in North Carolina. Hmm. And they have a drone unit that actually has a lot of the thermal capabilities and, and lots of thermal imaging and different types of uh, drones that can help with searching for people, both in some sort of uh, criminal aspect or just search and rescue. And they're going to let me kind of have a hands-on little experience with their mobile command unit and, and, and see what they're all about. So I'll make a video about that, share it with everyone, and I don't know. I, I don't really know what to expect. I, I've never seen it before. But they just said, Ed, we want you to come over and share this on your channel. And I said, well, let's do it. Okay, so very that's cool. That's what I'm excited about. Very cool. And uh, we have to address the, uh, the elephant in the room. You've got a drum set back there, and as many times as I've watched your channel, I've never seen you play the drums. Would uh, I be putting you well, on the spot, sir? If you, if, if you were to go back, if you were to go back about a year, you will see that I have a couple of videos. Up, actually, about maybe about half a year. I have a video called um, "Sailor's Delight," and it's on my channel. And I do play the drums, but. I will have to admit those were programmed drums. I did not play live in the recording, but I, I looked like I was playing really well, but I will have to admit that I'm not the best drummer in the world. Um, but yeah, I do have a good time with drums. Um, RSP and, drone uh, photography. As well as, 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 as guitars. <laughs> on second. Before that goes by, I just, see now it's gone by, and I got two screens going. Yeah. I, I did want to, uh, I have, I, I don't want to, and I'm sorry, I don't seem to want to seem like I'm ignoring the chat. We're going to do, do you have time to stick around since this whole, thing is a little late Me? do you have time yeah yeah to do a little uh, q a later okay so we will sure talk to the the, yeah, the chit chatters no, rsp drone photography aerial photos and video 20 dollars super chat thank you so much that's all i can afford for now as the button says i used to have money but now i have drones awesome thank you so so much um i've got an awesome clip here that it, and now if you if you have trouble with visibility on your drone there's a solution someone sent to me and I never even considered this this is from Zane on <laughs> Zane Zollywitz Zollywitz Zane Zollywitz he said solved the drone visibility problem check this out this is pretty incredible dude I'm gonna blow your mind away you're gonna be able to see this thing from space Watch this. This is a strobe on his Mavic. Wow. That's a great idea. It's lighting up the entire room. That's great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's very excited at the end here. <laughs> Dude, that light is so bright. There's a link in the description if you want one of those for your drone. I'm definitely going to get one for me. Cause you, so is that... <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> yeah, you can see that so even in the... So LED lights or is that one in the center? That's one. That's one uh, Cree light strobe. Interesting. Yeah, there's that's a link in the description. Cool. It's only like $38 and it's really light so it won't affect your, uh, your drone too much. I'm going to get one of those for the daytime. Uh, I want to see if... If the gimbal is down on the Mavic, mm -hmm. would you see that? I don't think you would, because he had it on the he had it on the bottom there. Oh yeah. Because I'm wondering if you had it pointed straight down. <clears throat> oh yeah, if you're gonna you see the the reflection, reflection. Or the glare. I don't think you would. That's a pretty cool idea. Definitely. Well, certainly if you're next to a building or in some clouds, it'll you'll get some kind yeah. of reflection going on. But yeah. The question is, was he covering these? Was he covering the, the little uh, sensors on the bottom? I don't know. Oh, right. But uh, that is interesting. Cool idea. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, Linda, you, know, you yes, know what sir? I could use right now as a stress reliever? What's that, Kenny? I could use some Linda jokes. Mm. 
First of all, let's let's ask our pal and see if you can beat her. Alexa, tell me a joke. Knock knock. Who's there? Xavier. Xavier who? Xavier self. You must go on without me. Mm. Mm. <laughs> You've got some stuff better than that, don't he you? He always has jokes. <laughs> okay, here's here's one. Yeah, later Why on. do mathematicians like parks? Why do mathematicians like parks? Yeah. Why? Because of all the natural logs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's deep. Good side. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. <clears throat> I think you got a graduated from high school to get that one. <laughs> well, I got, a, I got another one. Yeah, hit me. I got Go a little lower tech one. What you got? Okay. Who is Santa's favorite singer? Who is Santa's favorite singer? Mm-hmm. Who? That, that's Elvis Presley. Elf is Presley. Oh, oh wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You're welcome. I'll be here all night. I, I, that one. I hope you're going to... I hope you're gonna end on a on a good one. Oh, you know I will. Okay, bring it on I home. Know, I was gonna say, why did the computer show up late for work? Why? why it had a hard drive. Hey! Oh. Hey! <laughs> and a couple actually, of those I for you. I that one up because I'm not good at jokes. No, no. You saw my screen get a little no, brighter. You know what? This would be great. <laughs> the joke battle. I them. Hold on, joke mm. battle. The joke battle begins right now. In this corner, <laughs> Linda, coming in at an unspecified weight. And in that corner, it's Ed Ricker, coming in at, how much you weigh? Uh, 220, maybe. 200 and something, if you include the beard thing. Yeah. All right. Add a little bit, a couple All right. ounces. Linda, it's your turn. All right. Uh, let me think real quick. Did you hear the one about the statistician who drowned crossing the river? Mm. Yeah, it was on average only three feet deep. Where, 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 where are you getting these, Ed? He's got the comp these these deep ones. <laughs> Ed, your turn. Interesting. Um, <laughs> here's one. Yeah. Did you hear about the Italian chef with the terminal illness? No. He passed away. Oh, he passed yeah, away. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that one. Your little fake golf clap. There you go. Over to you, Linda. Uh, why did Santa go down the chimney? Why did Santa go down the chimney? Mm -hmm. why, because it suits him. Suit. Okay. Okay, chimney. Ed. Oh. Last one. Okay. Last one. Shoot, shoot. Okay. The floor is yours, sir. Why do watermelons have fancy weddings? Why do watermelons have fancy weddings? Because they can't elope. Mm. I like it. I like that one a lot. Okay. And now, totally ladies and reading. gentlemen. Yes, yes. I see comments. That's on the internet. Yes. <laughs> and I'm now, cheating. ladies and gentlemen, back to drone stuff. Um, everybody knows uh, Billy Kyle, don't you? Billy Kyle? Billy Kyle? Anyone? Yes. I wanna, yes. Billy yeah, yeah, Kyle yeah, yeah, stopped yeah, yeah. by my live chat last night. That's right. And you know uh, Henrik Olsen from Drones and Electric yes. Unicycles? He's mm -hmm. going to be a guest coming up. Uh, I believe in uh, br 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 awesome. in uh, 2018 January. So Henrik is doing some drone tips leading up to Christmas, and he invited me to do one, and Billy Kyle did one. Mm -hmm. And Billy Kyle's really kind of reinforced something that I've been saying forever, and I know it's going to spark an argument. And I want your your opinion, Linda, and your opinion, Ed, and then we're going to settle it today. We're going to settle it. I hope it doesn't blow up the chat, but here is Billy Kyle's tip, and I agree with him. Is the grip that you use on your controller during flight. Instinctively, when you pick up the remote, your thumbs will rest on the sticks, pointer fingers will sit on the buttons towards the backside, and your other three fingers will hold the weight of the bulky remote. To get the most control of your drone and gimbal while covering all the buttons at once, I like to grip the sticks with both my thumb and yes. pointer fingers, cover the back buttons with my middle and ring fingers, yes, yes. and finally hold the weight of the controller with my pinky fingers. With those pinky fingers, I can also use the customizable buttons underneath of the remote. If you think that this gets too heavy, you can always use a lanyard to transfer the weight of the remote to your neck. It'll be the best five bucks that you ever spent. Indeed, sir. Pinchers unite. Are you a pincher? Or are you a thumber, sir? Do you do it right or do you do it wrong? 
Ed, the floor. I do it right, but that's, I guess, a matter of perspective. Um, <laughs> well, now, Ken, I got to ask, do yeah. you have a Mavic? You, don't, you, you do not have a Mavic Pro, do you? I don't, no. That is, uh, hold on a second. I, I've done this twice now, sorry. Okay. I'm guessing there's different grips for different right. drones. <laughs> I've, I learned to fly drones on a Mavic. Uh-huh. And for everyone who has a Mavic, you, you will remember and you will know that these are very much shorter than a Phantom 4 Pro thumbstick. That's a very small, almost a video game style uh, thumbstick. Yeah. So that is a little more forward for me to, to do this to, with the pinch method. Um, now, I learned on a Mavic, so when I got the Phantom, I did the exact same thing. And it was kind of just this natural progression with my drones that I just kept using my thumbs. And now with my FPV quad, I still use my thumbs. Now, mm. Mm. I've mm. tried to use the pinch method or a hybrid pinch method. And, and for those of you who uh, know about Mr. Steele, he uses a hybrid pinch method. And maybe I can use I think the I've phantom. Used, yeah. He uses a thumb. I, you know, and sometimes the fingers I've, are just on the, on the front, on the top of it. Yeah. And he finds better control that way. I've uh, used a, a, a kind of, I've watched myself in videos and sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll do a hybrid, uh, depending if I'm mm -hmm. doing very, very uh, minute uh, movements. I will use mm -hmm. a hybrid, but I'm never, never a thumber. Never. A well, thumb. and, and I know I watched one of your videos recently, Ken, and you actually were talking <laughs> about that, and you taped a Sharpie to a guy's thumb as your point <laughs> of, well, you don't have the same dexterity with your thumb as mm -hmm. you do with two mm -hmm. fingers. And, uh, well, I don't know. I just... I don't agree with you in that regard. I, I think that you can have the same dexterity. And I, I think I actually was like, hmm, I wonder. So I took my thumb on a piece of paper. I didn't have a pen on it, but I started to draw my name. And I thought, actually, that's that's pretty easy, Ken. Um, so I'm not sure if I agree with you on that one. I think it's more how you start to learn. Yes. How you will continue to learn. Yes. And to shift behaviors can be a bit of a traumatic experience for the life of your drone, the, the, the well-being of your drone for, for at least a couple of weeks until you get used to it. So That's if right. you're willing to go the correct method, perhaps. Yeah, but, well, um, uh, Billy admitted that he, good, he did start out being a gamer. He started out doing the thumbs, but he found that he had more dexterity using the pinch method. And that, of course, isn't uh, going to be the right way for everybody. I'm not saying mm -hmm. one way is right and one way is wrong. Yes, I am. Pinch is right. But uh, Linda, what do you think? What are, what are your thoughts? What do you do when you fly? I think that the best method for handling your controller is the method that keeps that drone safe and in flight and in a way that you want it to fly. So if you have to use your thumbs and that works well for you and that gets your drone whatever it is that you want, then that's what you need to be doing. If not, and you want to pinch it and that gets you to find control that you desire, then do that. But I think the primary thing is to be safe and keep the drone in the air and if you want to experiment with it, you know, put the drone up in front of you uh, 10, 15 feet off the ground and, and try to see what works best for you. I tend to personally kind of go between the two or sometimes I will put my thumb on one of them and I will pinch with the other. A lot of times if I am uh, flying circles around something, I'm basically doing an orbit, then I will pinch because I can keep that stick much more easily in one place you know what i mean like it's it's yeah. i get a lot more fine control and so that way i don't have little jerky movements as i'm doing the orbit but Le that's for me personally and somebody else's hand mechanics may may be different than so i don't really fault people one way or the other i don't have any strong feelings about it well wow, leave it okay. to linda to, to to be very logical darn you and your <laughs> logic all right. Well, I agree. I mean, yeah, it's it's really how you how you, how works best for you and how to keep your drone safe. You said it best. I do also say that maybe with a controller that's not center spot, the throttle, you may find that that feels a little bit different for you depending on whether you're using pinch or yeah. a thumb method. Right. A center sprung throttle may feel a lot better with two fingers or, you know, however your hand is well, shaped. Well, I think Ed makes a good point in that it is also very dependent, I think, on controller. So the controller I use is the controller for my Phantom 4. If I had that little Mavic controller, I would probably use an entirely different method, but I don't. So. And, and by the way, I remember a time in college when just about every weekend I was center sprung. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All You're right. fired. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time right now to give away this most desired of drones. 
I know everybody's been waiting. It's been over an hour because They're of the waiting. little debacle. So someone is going to win this. This wonderful Show Me Me drone right now. It's the 4K version. Man, that looks good, doesn't it? And it's got, of course, uh, have you flown this, Ed? Have you flown this one? Mm -mm, no, I've only seen it on your channel. I have not flown it personally. Uh, these legs fold up. And I tried to fly it with these up like this. There's really no point because the camera won't turn around all the way. But it will how fly would you that take way. off with the landing gear up? How would that happen? Oh, uh, you got a like, buddy with you... a you got a buddy with a controller, and you're kind of holding it like this. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it doesn't it's... happen automatically or anything. Oh no, no, okay. no, no. It's a two person job. So anyway, I recorded me picking the winner earlier, and now finally. We'll find out who that is. Enjoy. Well, looky here. It's our old pal, the Show Me Me drone. Hey, buddy. Doing all right? I know you hate me, Ken. Yeah, I thought so, yeah. First, I want to thank <laughs> everybody for subscribing to my new channel. As soon as I announced it, all you had to do to win the drone was subscribe to the Daily Haha -Ha and make a comment. My subscribers went through the roof. Look at this, this is in the first hour. Thank you so much for doing that. Makes a fella feel useful. Speaking of useful, I showed you just the other day that this is a very useful drone. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> That's the way. I'm just kidding, of course. It's a very great entry level drone for under $500 and it has a 4K camera. So there's a link in the description if you want to buy one if you don't win it, I used one of those super boring comment generation was a who's it thing and was it's the Meduzies. And I picked out 50 finalists. Here they are. I've actually printed them out and cut them into little strips of paper. I will now, in no particular order, spread these pieces of paper along <laughs> the top of the Show Me Me drone. And now the winner is actually up to the drone. I'm going to turn it on. And the piece of paper with the person's name on it that is closest to the drone, when I turn it off, will win. This is going to get messy. <laughs> and I think we're ready. <laughs> I'm kind of scared. In three, <laughs> two, one. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. And off. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I think we have a winner over here. I'm gonna pick the one that was on the top. There was a few here, but this was actually the closest one. And the winner is this guy, right here. It's yeah! Herb Flying High. Congratulations, hey. Herb Flying High. You just got yourself a Me drone from Xiaomi. It's a 4K drone, it uh, rakes leaves, and decides contest. Congratulations, buddy. And thanks to everyone who participated in this contest. I'll be giving away more drones very soon on this channel. I'm thinking maybe this was a poorly conceived concept to begin with. Um, I never think about after something like this. All right, so <laughs> congratulations, my friend. And thanks that to everybody. Really cool. you, you like the way I did that? You're crazy, but that was cool. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people... I'm glad you didn't take off. I was like, you're doing that right next to your computer, but you didn't take off. No, right. no, no, no. Certainly not. I appreciate everybody uh, participating in that contest. Um, I know you're disappointed if you didn't win. If you're Herb, you're very ecstatic. Make sure to private message me and give me your full name and, and your address. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world. I will ship it to you. Um... I have other things to give away tonight, so don't feel bad. Don't leave. I've got these uh, these uh, filters for your lens on your Inspire One. I know that leaves some people out, but nonetheless, it's there. And now that music that you're hearing right now, Ed, you can stick around for the Q&A real quick. I'm still here. Yeah, I'll stick awesome. around. Awesome. All right. Let's uh, turn our attention to the chat and see what people are talking about. First, if you wouldn't mind, chatters, just go ahead and type in your age. I'm always interested to see... How old people are around the world. And Ed, isn't this just such a wonderful hobby? Because nowhere else will you see 51-year-olds hanging out with, uh, you know, like 20-year-olds. You know what I mean? This this brings yeah. everybody together. 
Whoa, we got there you. they come. Wow. 57, All sorts of ages. 3, 70. A lot of older people. Like Somebody lied and said they were three. We got uh, 12, wow. 17. Wow. Hmm. Maybe they have their baby on their lap. I mean, who knows? Maybe. You know, it's it's really interesting because you look at your demographic, well, your your analytics and your demographics just to see uh, where your viewers come from. Mm -hmm. And Linda, I'm not sure where your demographics lie at, but it's interesting because for mine, it seems to be all over the board. Although it does also seem to be like 95% male. Yes. But um, it is kind of interesting that age really doesn't seem to make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for for doing that. Now, if you have any questions for Linda... Or Ed, and you guys are both photographers by trade, right? Is that what you do for a living? What do you do for a living, sir? Me? Uh, well, I'm a videographer. So videographer? I don't really do photos that much, but I do a lot of video production for commercials, for weddings, for real estate, uh, special events. Yeah. Okay. Good and uh, which is your favorite? Slow right now. <laughs> uh, well... I would say probably live events are, are nice because you can kind of interact with people sometimes, you know, like um, if you're shooting maybe a concert, that can be a lot of fun too. Weddings are fun. They can be fun, although they can also be exhausting. And by the time you finish the wedding, you just feel like, oh, I made it. Like that's all you can say is I made it. Yeah, I've done a few <sighs> so. weddings and that's it does take a lot out of you. And there's a lot of pressure yeah. from the family too. Uh, Jack yeah. Bisson asks, Ed, why do you stick to 24 frames per second? That's a good question. I do 24 frames per second if I'm looking for something cinematic looking. 24 is the frame rate of film. If you go to maybe a movie theater, you'll see primarily 24 frames per second for most movies. Now, with these new televisions that have all that smooth motion, I think that a lot of people are kind of getting used to seeing higher res or higher frame rates or at least higher refresh rates for televisions. But I still like that 24 frame per second look because it just it gives it a little more character. Um, 30 frames per second is something I, I don't usually shoot in because it just doesn't provide that same type of feeling, that same type of creative aspect that I'm looking for. And you use now 30 frames per second is is good for other things as well, though. Linda has definite opinions on this. I have a question. It's not an opinion. Oh, okay. My, my question is that, like, for me, like, for example, when I do uh, film, I shoot in 30 frames per second, not because I don't like 24, but because that's what my shoots. And so mm. I can convert my 30 frames a second to 24, but it's going to do a drop frame. So it's going to look mm -hmm. very skippy because it can't divide evenly. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that yourself? Or do you not mix the two types of footage? I try not to mix the two types of footage. I usually try and shoot 24 with a drone if I'm moving slowly. Now, as you know, and I'm sure with all your movement with your drones that you've done in the past, that 24 frames per second could cause the image to look a little stuttery. You don't have that clear motion that some people are looking for. Um, now, if you have like a 24 frame per second timeline and you import 30 frames per second into it, you will see a lot more of that issue, that stutteriness that happens in post-production. But if you reverse it, and you have 24 frame per second footage dropped into a 30 frame per second video or timeline, you won't see that quite so much. So that's how you can kind of get away with mixing frame rates, is, is exporting at 30 and including some 24, as opposed to the other way around. I think that it's a little little better option. I yeah, think I well, just my learned something. Doesn't, at 4K does not shoot uh, 24 frames a second, so I, okay. don't, I just shoot everything in 30, and then that way everything looks as smooth as, as possible gotcha. so I don't have any kind of weirdness going on. I don't know how that is for other drones, but I can see get, Ken's eyes are getting glazed over because <laughs> he's, he's he out. No, no, <laughs> no, no. He's gone. I, he's I, out of there. I, he's ready to have pack we lost No, him. no, no. We're, in fact, uh, this is a great point to remind everybody that we're going to be doing, uh, after the live stream, this show will continue for another couple minutes and we'll do some extra photography stuff, just me and Linda, for the bonus show. Uh, it's, also bonus. Yes, and uh, I have a couple other questions here. I'm scrolling back. Uh, Aiden Divil best one to know how much is drone registration? Uh, FAA drone registration, just five dollars. Uh, and he also wanted to know uh, when water freezes, does it produce heat? I don't know. I'm gonna hold off on that. Uh, what yeah, drone is Linda with some sort of physics or chemistry degree? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what drone is Linda talking about? Your your drone, Linda, is a Phantom Four. Is it the not? Phantom Four is what I what I drive in the sky. Okay. Cool. Very cool. I, I, I film at 60 frames a second most of the time just because 
I don't like the way it, it's it's jittery when I'm doing fast mm. motion. But um, I'm well now shooting at sixty, you do have a lot of options too, because you could down uh, downgrade that to thirty frames per second, and even twenty four from a sixty per, uh, frame per second clip will look pretty decent as well. So that might be a pretty good option for you, Ken. Yeah. And it's worked for you so far, obviously. <laughs> yeah, but you have to have kind also, of a... whoever was asking about the water freezing, did I hear something chemistry related? Yes, Lindy, do you want to answer that question? Does water produce heat yeah. when it freezes, is the question. It, it does, yeah. It's an exothermic reaction. Oh, exothermic. Yeah. Word of the day. Exothermic. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. All right. And now you know. What editing software? Phew. I guess we can all answer that. I use a Adobe Premiere Pro. I know you yep. use the Adobe family of products too, Ed. And yeah, Lin I use Premiere Pro as well, mm -hmm. primarily. Linda? Um. You know, I use Premiere Pro, but I want to say that there are some other excellent packages out there because I think some people that want to edit the video footage aren't going to have access to Premiere Pro. Um, and so my suggestion to somebody who doesn't have Premiere Pro, for example, would be HitFilm Express. It's something that you can download for free. It has great functionality. Over time, they, they end up giving away little plugins for it. You can edit 4K footage in it. It's really great. So if you're you know not really uh, in the budget for a bigger product like uh, Premiere Pro, you don't have access to that, try to give HitFilm Express uh, a shot. Interesting. Good idea. Um, well, that's what a lot of people ask in my live streams, too, is what a, what a good, um, cheaper or easy-to-use software is. And usually I just ask the people in the comments because I, I don't know. So that's good. Good option. Yeah, yeah. and I, I've tried to use that myself before, and it is uh, it is nice. And they have a lot of support. There's a lot of videos on how to use it properly. So I think if you're a beginner and you don't have Premiere, then give that give that a shot. At least, you know, that's from my own experience with it. So mm -hmm. uh, Let's see. Liam... <laughs> Mecklenburg. I'm horrible with names. I'm sorry. Uh, he asks, what should I do if I'm under the legal limit to register as a pilot commercially? What you should do is wait for the passage of time. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot you can do. Sit down, drink some water, and, and wait. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, go into the FAA on stilts. That might that might fool them. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Greg says that my sound input is low from my mixing sound effects desk. Do I sound bad? Am I low? I sound bad? Am I low? Check, 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 check. I'm not messing with anything. You sound good again. to me. Thanks, man. You sound your bad. sound effects. Oh, okay. Are your all sound right. effects decent? All of your, all of your. Between, between, yeah, well, those are know. very important. Those are critical. <laughs> that, if, if I didn't have those, I mean, we forget having a show, really. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I'm traveling to Ireland this summer. I live in the in the U.S. Do I need? to do paper registration for my drone? That's a good question. Have you ever, you've flown out of the country, haven't you, Ed? Uh, not out of the country. Uh, now the question was, he's from outside the US and he, he said, wants to fly in the US? He lives in the United States, he's traveling to oh. Ireland. Do I need to oh. register my drone? I'm sure each country has their own rules and that's something Definitely. that you're gonna wanna look into before you travel. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a Google question. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's a Googler. And uh, b -b -b any more questions? You see? And we do have the, the viewer video of, of the week coming up. Thanks, everybody, for following Ed. Uh, his channel link is in the, the, the description. Ed's awesome. And I got I to gotta tell you, Ed, and I told you this over the phone, but your, your voice is just so soothing. It, you've got this calming manner this calming tone with you isn't isn't this voice soothing linda i could hear you it's tell something. a bedtime story I, well you know i'm in radio so i i hear people's voices in a critical way and i gotta tell you i'm sure you've gotten a few subscribers especially from the fair sex just from your your voice my friend and it's the five percent um i uh <laughs> no well i don't know this mic and we actually share mics we we determined that earlier today in our right. skype test which went so well um and uh yeah we have the same exact mic ken and i which is kind of interesting and your mic is is almost what you said it's <laughs> almost half as old as me that's right i bought my microphone when ed was 11 years old <laughs> <laughs> so i've got underwear older than you kid <laughs> 
Aldi well, says uh, that he thinks uh, you're hitting on me. That might be the case, Ken. Well, <coughs> you 100% know, that's the case. <laughs> Ed, I, I didn't want to do this in front of everyone, but uh, you're my kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. And when you say Mike, you mean Mike as in what you're speaking into. Mike yeah, kind of guy. Uh, that's, that's right. Oh, wow, yeah, Linda yeah. with another one. With a little pun. <laughs> was, uh, Ken's all about those. I'm on fire. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, this show is going on about five hours, so let's just go ahead and do the viewer video of the week. Oh, nope. Got one more thing. Two more things. All right. I got to mention this. Okay. There is a DJI date bug, and uh, this is something that was sent to me by, I guess, DJI support. There's, uh, in, if you're using iOS 11.1, there's a bug in there that has affected a number of apps, including DJI Go and DJI Go 4. You may encounter instability or crashes when using these apps. Duh. I'm guessing that this is uh, what may be causing some of the problems people have been having with connectivity when you uh, have the, the green screen of death or it's just flashing. So all you have to do is just update to iOS 11.2, which has the fixes in there. Have you run into this problem with any of your DJI devices, Ed? Uh, I, only only on Android devices, which I guess this doesn't sound like we're talking about. Um, with my iPhone 7, I have not had that issue, and I can't remember what iOS version I'm using at the moment, but no, never had an issue with that with an Apple device. Uh, I have had some people who have been emailing me different links to videos about them talking about their issue, so it seems like it is happening. It was actually one person who sent me an iPhone 10 problem, so I'm not sure if that was the iOS problem or iPhone 10, but I know iPhone 10 has its own challenges, so can't really say for sure, but it, I'm sure people are having problems with Apple as <clears> Yeah, I've, I've done several videos on things that you need to do, but DJI never tells you about. Mm. And, uh, you know, you got to find these things out the hard way. And that's just a shame. DJI, their, their service is for crap. I mean, their, their drones are awesome and amazing, but the service. Mm. Linda, you agree or disagree? I agree. Or I disagree. I do both. <laughs> Linda's on the fence, <laughs> being a good diplomat. Okay. Yeah, All definitely. Right. I, I got, I got a, from last week, the guy that got his. Uh, Phantom 3 Pro stuck up in an antenna cluster. He finally got it down, and I'm going to go ahead and play the video he sent of that being recovered. Just want to let everybody know that he finally got it back. He says, After a month on the tower, we were able to get a climber to get it down for us, and it was back in the air that afternoon. There it is right there. You can see. The moral to the story <laughs> is, don't fly in areas where there are large obstacles such as cell towers because the consequences are hard to deal with course we went through many hours of despair and agony worrying about all the problems which could have been very bad so remember to heed this lesson and fly responsibly and that's from ken and dan hoyle yeah they had to go up and get their drone that was stuck it's not a good idea to fly too close wow. to these towers mm -mm. and then you know you put this guy in danger who has to go up and grab your drone for you I find that's kind of funny because a lot of times we're like, well, the drones can serve as inspection, you know, devices and, and, and we can, you know, make sure that we don't have to send someone up to inspect things. We can do it from a drone. Right. And now we're having to rescue a drone from the very thing we, we might have been inspecting. Yeah, just use caution. Uh, there's a little bit of audio of him inspecting his drone, drone the end here. Went so fast. <laughs> that's what I meant when I said Hey, you missed it. <laughs> I just thought you were kidding. No, I was like, he's like, I was like, he went straight up that pole and, and and right back. You know, I was like, dang, he's already got it. How far did you get along? Is to getting your drone in the air? How close were you? I had uh, two of the blades on it. <laughs> the uh... <laughs> this is it. It was up there for over a week, I believe. Dinged up for wow. hours. Body looks in good shape. Camera's uh, looks to be in fairly decent shape. All the screws have rust on them from the weather. Mm. Man, that's messed up. Camera seems to be. Give alarms not bent. This. 
I don't know if this is in bad shape or not, but it's, you know, I don't know if I would bad. trust that again for being up there that long. Uh, well, you yeah, know. if you're saying with the weather rusted the screws, it probably means it rained, right? Yeah, you're going to have all kinds of problems. So I'm, I'm glad you got your drone back, and maybe there's some footage in the card that's uh, recoverable. Okay. So is this a video that he sent you, Ken, or did you just find this? Oh, no, he sent that to me. He sent uh, oh. last, last week, uh, he sent me the first part, and I just wanted to conclude there. Now, uh, I, I do have to mention this. Linda, do you want to tell everybody what this is? Yeah, it's not going to ever be mine, but it is the <laughs> Xeon 2 crane for, uh, for DSLRs, yeah. Don't be sad, Linda. I'm a little sad, Ken. I'm going to let you use mine. Yeah, in Tennessee. I live in Arizona. Get it together. Oh, that's right. You're going to have to come visit me to use it. Anyway, uh, Ed, do you use a, a gimbal most of the time on your secondary cameras or anything? No, I use the camcorder style video cameras, and they would be too big. They wouldn't actually have that type of shape to them. So, unfortunately, no. Actually, smaller uh, camcorders will fit on there. That can hold up to seven pounds, and it's built for uh, DSLRs. Mm. Uh, it's made by uh, Zhiyun, of course, and they were nice enough to give me a second one, and I will be giving that away. It's an eight hundred dollar value. And so keep watching this nice. channel for your chance to win that. When are you giving it away? When, when is that happening? Uh, that's happening on the 12th of Neverary. <laughs> mm, I see. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. It, it'll happen us. probably sometime after the new year. And now, as this is the longest stream in history, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Ed, thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate it. Thanks, yeah, everyone definitely. else. For, for sticking around too. I very much appreciate it. And now the viewer video of the week. This is from Alan Dower. He sent some beautiful video of dolphins swimming off the coast of, and I don't know how to say this, it's in Ireland, it's Ballybunion. Have you heard of that, Ballybunion? Anyway, here it is, the viewer video of the week, enjoy. Ireland is so gorgeous. dolphins one time <laughs> she said it changed her life this video is changing my life in what way Ed? my mom my mom quills <laughs> <laughs> at my heartstrings yes heartstrings are being plucked at this very moment i don't have a heart no <laughs> but there's hey, a you're cavity smiling. you're enjoying it <laughs> Even people without a heart can enjoy this yes. video. The cavity where your heart should be will enjoy this video. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Once again, there's a there's a link in the description. And uh, that was from Alan Dower. And if you would like to uh, if you would like to get a video, please send a link to Ken Heron upload at gmail.com. Ken Heron upload at gmail.com. And before we say goodbye, I did want, whoop, whoop, well, that's not the right one. I did want to uh, mention <laughs> that this weekend, and I encourage everyone to, to, to come, this weekend, I'm going to shoot a video and I want everybody to be in it. It's a, a Christmas video that I'm, I'm going to try to do every year. I'm going to try to, I'm going to play the old one. Uh, here is where it's going to be. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, it's going to be. It's going to be in Nashville this Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Parthenon. 
So I do hope that you can be there or be square. So there's there's your invite, your official invite. And you're you're thinking to yourself, what what is this? What is this? Is that what you're thinking, Ed? You're thinking what uh, what is I'm, Ken I'm talking just about? Why I'm so happy. Look so happy. Oh, I'm very picture. very happy. You look I'll jubilant. <laughs> I was ju- But I was also <laughs> wondering what that was. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell us what it's all about. <laughs> okay, well, here is the one from last year. Basically, we get in front of a camera. I have this song. It's Jingle Bells. It's a jazzy version of Jingle Bells. And I play the song on a boombox at twice the speed. And we lip sync with it. And I shoot it in slow motion so that when it... Anyway, I'll, I, I won't explain it. I'll just play it. Here it is. This is last year's. If you want to be one of the background players, this Saturday, one o'clock in Nashville. Dashing through the snow <laughs> in a one horse open sleigh. Oh, the fields we go. Here comes the fireworks. <laughs> so, that's basically it. This year, I'm hoping to make it a big, huge extravaganza with everyone from the area that can uh, take time and, and, and bring stuff that would look good in slow motion. I've got confetti cannons like that. Wear uh, you know a hat, bring uh, some some streamers, you know whatever whatever you want to do. So once again, that is this Saturday in Nashville at 1 p.m. at the Parthenon. So please. was that you singing, Ken? I mean, it was you lip syncing, but was it you also singing? Because it sounded like it could have been. Your case. No, no, I'd love to take credit for that, but no, no, that wasn't me. Interesting. So, interesting. Uh, let's see if there's a cool idea. Uh, thanks, thanks. Hopefully, it'll get bigger and bigger every year. And uh, please uh, Rizvip me if you can. You know how if, far that is away from my house, if I can make that a road trip or not. Oh, can you make it? That would be awesome, Ed. That'd be amazing. I'll have to, I'll have to look. We'll talk. We'll talk. Okay, cool. Well, anyway, thank you so much for being on the the program tonight, and everybody, thank you so much for for being patient. I'm gonna get this thing. It's gonna be solid as a rock next time. I promise. Although some of you, I'm sure, enjoy watching me fail. <laughs> oh wait, we didn't give away these we didn't give away the things. Do we have time? Linda, it's up to you. Yeah, we, you want to save it for next yeah, time let's or do, do it? Let's, let's do wait, it. Come on, let's knock it out. Okay, we'll do it right now. All right. So I've got a still from one of my videos that I'm gonna put up on the screen. And you have to tell me what is the title of that video. Here's this right here. You may recognize this location from some of my videos. Now, there's several videos with this location. So, if you know the name of this particular one, just go ahead and chat it. And uh, Linda will try to catch the title. Oh, I'll catch it. All right. So, there that is. And the winner will get this three-piece filter kit. This is Digital Concepts. It's a polarized filter, ND4 filter, and an ND8 filter for your Inspire One, even if you don't have an Inspire One, it makes a fantastic Christmas gift or stocking stuffer. So win this right now. No, it's not called Two Guys in a Park. No, it is not. <laughs> no. So uh, <clears throat> if we don't get a winner right away, we'll go, I'll go ahead and just end out the show and uh, we'll start our... Two old men and a piano. <laughs> no, no. It, and, and that is unusual because I don't see any old men in the picture. <laughs> Do you? Really? Mm-mm. Yeah. At least two. You better watch it. You better I'm watch it. it. Okay. On the right, though, Ken, you have you have the most pleasant, youthful face. You're just like. You guys really ought to go in a date. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> um, did anybody get it? Nobody got it. Nope. Not- All right. Nope, well, what we're gonna do? Go. The chat will remain open after I stop the live. The I mean the the recorded part. And we're gonna do a little bonus part at the end me and linda if my voice will hold out 
So thank you once again, Ed, Ed Ricker Vlogs. You know what? This whole time I didn't even use your logo. There's your logo. Hey, there it is. I saw it once. Did you? Actually. Okay. Yeah, and I was like, yes! How rude of me to not put your, your logo up there. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you out. I'm going to make it even bigger. Keep it up there the rest of the evening? Bam! Right there. <laughs> Hold on. There you go. Go to Oh, wow. Ed, yeah, that's perfect. Ed yeah. Ricker Vlogs. <laughs> There's a link in the description. Yes, it's, yes, sir. That is perfect. Awesome. Thank you, sir. I can't thank you enough right. for, for putting up with this. I'm yeah, going to hang up you. with you right so now. Does, well, if, should I hang up with you just yes. in case? Yeah, yeah. Does that make things that's easier? A, that's okay. a good idea. Thank you for letting me on your show. Linda, nice to meet you. Nice Ken, to meet you, Ed. Nice talking with you as well. Awesome. Take care, everybody. See you, See you man. Thanks. Okay, now it's just us again there we go there we go make it all right. Right. like that all right so did, uh, nobody got it nobody's got it all right well i'm gonna go ahead and uh and close out this part of the show i don't know how long the bonus show will be but there will be a bonus show so if you're watching this on the replay that's the only way you're going to get to see it if you're watching this live you're gonna have to wait for the replay to be broadcast. And by the way, this is 720p. The replay will be much better uh, 1080p resolution. So, man. All the P's. <sighs> All the P's. There's so much stuff I didn't even include, but I'm just, I'm just worn out. So, until next time, buh. And bye. <laughs> All right bonus show we're here <laughs> it's a bonus oh my goodness ed was so polite for hanging on through all that was it horrible to watch was, nice was it horrible no no and i, I thought he, ed was well spoken he was a, a good guy yeah very nice guy very polite i don't know how many people would have stuck around through all that you know people are busy they got stuff to do plus you two really hit it off Oh, well, yeah, you know, I could see the glint in his eye. Uh, <laughs> Zeb Meat, that was a good show. I am new. Well, thanks, Zeb Meat. I yeah. appreciate that. Um, what do you want to talk about? Or you want to just sit here uh, and rest on our someone, loyals? We just got it. We just barely started the, the bonus show, and uh, Ray, I don't know. Who got it? Who got the answer? Uh, Ray H. Set. I don't even know. I don't know how to say that. It might be an abbreviation or something. But Ray. he he said it's it's drone and naked lady. That's it. Drone and naked lady was the title. Yeah. A little clickbaity. Yeah. A little clickbaity. But um. Yeah. yeah. I'll look for that later. But right now, I did want to play some of Linda's stuff. Let's let's try to get. How many subscribers do you have right now, Linda? Um, I think. 560 maybe? Oh, let's try to break 600. I'll tell you real quick. I'm going to look for you. Okay. Uh, oh, 570. My bad. 570. Okay. So 570. let's try to, to break 600. And I'll play a little bit of, of Linda's stuff here. This is Monsoon 2 Electric Boogaloo. There it is. Linda does fantastic time lapses you're too kind this is incredible now the version on her youtube page is about what a little over four minutes long it's three minutes and nine seconds three minutes nine seconds okay not to be specific but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow that's just beautiful beautiful 32 days of chasing storms during the monsoon season that's that's how long i was on the road and not consecutive days but spread out over several months you know yeah oh my gosh <clears throat> man my voice is going um yeah I, yeah have a drink of water and mm. while you're drinking a little water let me uh just grab a quick joke for you oh yeah okay what you got yeah why do mummies like the holidays why do mummies like the holidays yeah why because of all the wrapping. wrapping oh paper. yeah. Ooh. Mummies. Ooh boy. Ooh. Golly, golly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
That's a good one. <clears throat> that is a good one. You got another one? Uh, let me think real quick. Oh, let me, I tried to memorize. Some Alexa, of them. tell me uh, a joke. No, 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 I got one. Knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? Mikey. Mikey, who? My key is stuck in the keyhole. Oh, Let man. Me. Man. All right, what you got? I've been trying hard on the holiday themed ones. What, what do. What do Santa elves learn in school? What do Santa elves learn in school? Mm -hmm. What? The alphabet. Goodbye, everybody. And that's the bonus show. Ken's left, and now you're left with me. And who knows <laughs> what joke I will tell next. The alphabet. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I don't think you can top that. <sighs> yeah, I'm not going to try. Okay, Unless good. you want some other kind of horrible math <clears throat> that no one's going to get. Mm, let's hold off on that for now. By the way, I just wanted to let everybody know that AirMap is now available in New Zealand. This is what I use all the time to check to see if it's okay to fly uh, here and there. Yeah. What do you think about that before you fly app? <clears throat> From the FAA? It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's... I think someone created that app long ago and then they never updated it it's just kind of useless mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so uh let's see i got some other pictures here from viewers let me get some good uh some good music okay here we go uh, i forgot to share these pictures let's see finally people have gotten their eyeballs I apologize. I do a mailing probably every two weeks. And I apologize if you haven't gotten your stuff. But uh, this is from Robert Moore. He got his his eyeballs. That's cool. Yeah. And let's see what he else I got. He still has that sticky on his lens, does he not? It looked like it. And he also got the Pigeon Jerky Prize Pack. Pigeon Jerky Prize Pack. Look at that. That's Thumbs just up. awesome. Yes, sir. And I got some other pictures. I got, and this is probably one of my favorite screen names. His name is the Drone Trucker. This is the Drone Trucker's drone right here, on top of the Freightliner. Oh is, that tape? is that tape on the top of it? What? Uh, that's one of those uh, patterns that you can get. You can get skins. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see now. Yeah, okay. skins. So, the Drone Trucker sends that one in. Let's see what else I got. <laughs> oh, uh, Manuel Slur or Sleer, he got his eyeballs, and doesn't it look like it's like a oh. girl with eyelashes the way he did it? He put the eyebrows above the eyes, and the the vent holes kind of look like girly eyelashes, doesn't it? A little bit. Yeah. It's cute. I dig it. I like it. I dig it. So thank you, Manuel, for that. And I believe that's all I have right now. Oh, so guess what I did last night? What did you do? I went out and took me some pictures because last night was uh, the peak of the Geminid meteor shower. So I thought I'd go out and see if I can catch one. Oh, that's right. And uh, did you send me something? I did. Okay, did you send it to my email? No, no I, I actually, actually just put it, put it in the Dropbox folder. Oh, okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, check that out if you'll excuse me. While in I'm... case you want to share it. You don't, you don't have I to. Absolutely but, no, do. I absolutely do. Hey, you remember how we, uh, you know, Ken and I met, for so, from some of you that don't know, he came out here uh, in August of last year, and uh, we flew over by this abandoned airfield. And so this is only relevant because last night when I went to shoot the meteor shower, I was actually maybe only about 10 miles from that location uh, to shoot the shower. So I just thought <clears throat> you want to know that I was in our, in our haunts last night. I like that place, that, that big cement thing. I'll put a link in the description of that. Yeah, yeah, that old uh, bunker. What is, was that a bunker? Well, that really is for... Um, they were doing uh, testing of their weaponry, and so they would uh, aim their weapons in that direction, in that bunker, and then they would fire off ammunition so that they could make sure that that target uh, was uh, set correctly for the uh, wow. guns on the aircraft. Okay, I've got your, I've got your photo. photo. Right. It's called a target butt range. Right there. Oh, a target butt range. Okay. So there it is. You're looking at it. Now, how did you take that yeah. picture? That is fantastic. 
So I, obviously I have to, well, maybe not obviously some people, but I have to set my camera up on a tripod. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you, you want to take a relatively long exposure. You know, I think uh, this is a 13 second long exposure. And during those 13 seconds, that meteor happened to strike through uh, through the frame. So and that I'm, that streak that that streak is a is a meteor, not a plane. That's that's a meteor. That's correct. Wow. And then some of the bigger stars that you see there off to the right um, are, are part of uh, Orion's belt. You can kind of make out Orion's nebula over there. So it's hmm. it's pretty, it was pretty dark out there. It was cool. Hey hey Linda. Hey Kenny. Hey hey um, you know, I was. I was gonna, I was gonna get married to to a girl, but yeah. I have yet to meet her. Uh, uh. <laughs> eh, uh. It, it needs some work. I'll I'll do some workshopping uh. on that one. Yeah, I'll, uh. and Linda's gone. Okay, it's just me. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you doing any other cool stuff? Uh, cool stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, just that thing this Saturday, and uh, we'll be hanging out with Dana. Dana's going to be there. Oh, cool. uh, yeah, uh, Michael Esquire. He was in a couple of our videos, that uh, one with the big yeah. neon on top of the factory, so he'll be there. So there's going to be at least three people. Oh, and Jacob, uh, Dana's son, will be there. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, other than that, no, not a lot. All right, all right. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I do have something to... To share, I was gonna do this last week. You remember the the Jiun, uh, Speaking of the Jiun Crane, yeah. The, the part in that video that everybody seems to enjoy is uh, the chicken part. I'll just go ahead and replay that part right here. The Jiun Crane Two Three Axis Stabilized Gimbal, and despite what you've heard, it's not the best gimbal in the world. No, the best gimbal in the world is a chicken. Most birds and chickens can't move their eyes. They don't have the vestibular ocular reflex like we do. You'll never see a chicken move their eyes without moving their head. <laughs> if they want to lock on a gaze, they will move their, their heads instead of their eyes. This one's very interested in something over there. But you can see they're very good at keeping their heads still when they're concentrating on something. <laughs> the problem comes when you want to attach a camera. Oh, see? They don't like that. You got any tape? I almost got pecked. I almost got pecked from that guy. I would have served you right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put a camera on that poor thing. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no chickens were harmed in that sequence. Yeah, I know. So I, I got pictures from someone who was truly inspired by that. This is what they wrote. As in the DJI inspired? <laughs> More jokes coming up. Uh, this is from uh, Keep It Lit. Hey, Ken, after listening to your suggestions, I am happy to announce that we are starting a new company. We are going to build the world's best electronic gimbal known to man so far. We already have a budget, but we still need help to get us all the way. That's why we're going to start a Kickstarter. We've already half finished a draft of a working product that we will release sometime in June. Please support us. And he gave uh, the link there. And then yeah. when I when I click on the on the link, I want to make sure I get this. This is what comes up. <laughs> the chicken yeah. crane one. <laughs> I don't think somehow I don't think that that large camera will screw down on the on the chicken. The camera head. is very see through. It yes. has some other. It's somewhat immaterial to this plane of existence. Well, yeah, but that's what they do, you know, in ads. You know, they're, you're selling the chicken, not the camera. They're just showing where the camera would go. So yeah. anyway, I thought that was funny. Thank you very much. Somebody worked hard on that. I appreciate yes. it. Yes. Time well spent. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. <sighs> yeah, we covered everything, didn't we? Pretty much. Uh, we were able to give away those filters in the end there. So. Yeah. <clears throat> was, that a good, uh, was that a good bonus show? Was that enough yeah, I mean, of a bonus as far show? As bonuses go. Any 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 show is better than none if it's bonus. Right. So I have a few problems left to work out. The software was fine. The the bandwidth was fine. Um, my computer 
settings need to be tweaked. And after that, man, it would be like NBC or Ken BC. Yeah. But when you uh, when you played the uh, pigeon jerky song, yeah. As soon as that started, the audio dropped. So I knew that the audio was going to be out by the time that that song ended, and it, and it was. Huh. That's weird. Yeah, it dropped out. I couldn't hear the the pigeon jerky song at all on my end. So. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, but. That's a good song. After a bunch of stress, and I'm that sure would be a Aretha sweat, Franklin's respect. We were back. Did you hear that? I did. What did she say? She said, Aretha Franklin's respect. I don't know how she heard you through my headphones, but she did. That was Alexa. Uh, oh, Alexa, stop. I can't say her name. It's ghosts and some kind of conspiracy. Yeah. And, and baby Jesus. And all baby Jesus, all that. Well, th- thanks, Linda, for uh, your patience. Thanks, everybody, for watching the bonus show. Don't forget, be there this Saturday, December 16th at the Parthenon. Free confetti. That's right. Uh, bring everything that would look good in slow motion. I know uh, you can't really conceive of how awesome this will be, but it will be awesome if you show up. So, 1 p.m., that's Central Time, in Nashville, December 16th. Please, please be there. Cool. Yeah, Pe- please. People are still chatting from before. A little bit. Yeah. Or it's, you know, just lag. It's not as much as last week during the bonus show, that's for sure. True. Well, I think I think uh, we did a successful show, at least after I paste these together and then delete the live version that nobody will ever see again. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, maybe somebody will have already downloaded it and they'll post it on the Internet. Maybe. And that's fine with me. Uh, Gary, the Everyday Dad, will be the guest next week when everything's oh, oh. perfect. So yeah. he'll be on. And then after that, the, the week following that, on December 28th, Jerry... Uh, Caverly. He's a Mesquite, Texas teacher who started a drone club with his students. So we'll talk to him and see how he's getting the getting the youngsters so, involved. Is that the, same, is that the same guy whose video you showed last week? Remember you had that video of them flying kind of a drone in the hallway? That's right. Yep. Okay. And, 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 and next time when I show a video from him, it won't be sideways. That'll it'll, be, it'll be that'll the right be way. Nice. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, I can't thank everybody enough for all the, the super chats. That was amazing. I got a lot of pity super chats tonight, but it all adds sure up, did. and it all goes right back into this show and my channel. So thanks to everybody. Love you. Mean it. And that's it for the bonus show and this edition of Thursday Night Live. Until next time, buh. And bye.